Lesson 4.1, Average Rates of Change. Before we jump into average rates of change, the question I have here is what is calculus? We have been working through many modules on pre-calculus topics to get ready for calculus, but what is calculus? Well, an answer, one answer could be what are some topics that we study? So you might hear someone say derivatives as an answer. Certainly we study derivatives in calculus. You might also hear integrals. Someone else might say limits. These are all possible answers. And in calculus one, you will learn all of these. But fundamentally, let me write this perhaps in black, fundamentally calculus is the study of rates of change. So let me box this word, and then I can also emphasize the rates of change. And this goes back even to the very first lesson in, in this ramp up, which was setting lines and slopes of lines. And so that's where I want to get started with this example. It says, suppose I drive a car exactly 45 miles down a straight road. How far have I traveled in two hours? Well, I don't really need all of this space on the page to just answer the question because we can just multiply. We have 45, this is in miles per hour. And then we have times two, this one is in hours. And you see, we get 90. And the units here would be miles. So we have traveled 90 miles. But see, perhaps I'll highlight this. I want to take this a little bit further, talk about rates of change. So I can graph my position function. If I say start here at 0, 0, and after two hours, I'm here, 90 miles, then my position because I'm traveling exactly 45 miles per hour the entire time, my position function, P of T, I'll call this position, this is a straight line, and I know more. This 45 is an important number. I'll write it here. This is the slope. Well, why would that be? If you go back to the very first lesson of our ramp up, um, we know the slope. This is change in, here it would be P divided by change in T. And really this is what's given, but also we could look at a graph. Say it's 90 minus zero. My final position my, minus my initial position and then over two minus zero. Also, let's think about units here. P is in miles, T is in hours and so the change in p over change in t which is the slope would be miles per hour so this is this 45 that we were talking about and that was given in fact in the problem and so what you see here this is an important comment this rate of change here for this problem the rate of change here it's um speed or velocity Maybe I'll mention velocity. This is a slope, okay? In fact, it's the slope of this line we have graphed. And generally, I'm going to highlight this. We will see throughout a little bit in this ramp up and without a doubt more in your calculus course that every rate of change is a slope. And so it's an important comment to make as we're first introducing average rates of change. I will just add a note and then we will move on to our next example. Here, the rate of change is constant because, well, that's even given in the problem, but it's an important comment. The rate of change is constant. This is what happens when we are working with a straight line. It comes right here exactly 45 miles per hour we have a constant rate of change but now let me change the problem okay now i'm driving down a straight road for two hours but i have this different position function okay so let me just put some 
points. After one hour, I'm here. And after two hours, I'm here. So I can add this. This is the point 2, 90. That has not changed. But now I have the point, say, 1, 60. That's what it seems to be from my graph. So you notice in the first hour, what's the rate of change? Well, the change in P divided by the change in T. In the first hour, you see I have 60 minus 0 divided by 1 minus 0. So in the first hour, my rate of change is 60. This would be miles per hour. And the second hour, it's different. Here I do not have a constant rate of change over the interval 0 to 2, say. But the second hour, well, the change in P divided by change in T. Well, it's a slope. You see we have 90 minus 60 divided by 2 minus 1. And this is 30 miles per hour. Now, these are our rates of change. This, in fact, is the average rate of change from 0 to 1. This is the average rate of change from 1 to 2. But the question is, what is this a slope of? Right? I mentioned every rate of change is a slope. And these are slopes of lines we can connect. Okay, what I really did was calculated the slope of this line. This line has a slope 60. And then we can connect here. And this line has a slope 30. Okay, I just have sketched the line segment, but this would be these slopes. I said this verbally, but it's definitely meant worth writing. And that is here, the rate of change is not constant. What I have written down really is an average rate of change over the first hour, 60 miles an hour, and an average rate of change over the second hour, 30 miles per hour. Maybe I will call this note number one. And note number two is really about this kind of physical application. We are looking at velocity here. Um, and velocity, it's important to understand that velocity can be positive, negative, or zero. It's different than speed. In fact, in this case, because the car is just moving forward, velocity, speed, same thing. But if, the, if my position came like this, okay, on this part, the car is moving in the backward direction. Speed is still positive because, well, speed is always non-negative, but if we had a graph like that for position, the velocity would be negative. There is a sign associated to velocity. That's really just a comment to understand the difference between this word and speed. But now that we have done two examples coming from um, position, and, and velocity, let us define the average rate of change of a function on an interval. Well, as you can guess, it's going to be a slope calculation. And how we do this, we take f of b minus f of a, and then we divide by b minus a. And I could write this with our change in notation. It's a change in f divided by the change in x. Okay. It really is a slope, but this is the average rate of change of a function on an interval. So let's do an example here. This one does not come per se from a physical application, but we can still talk about an average rate of change. We have y equals three divided by x minus two. We want to find the average rate of change from x equals 4 to x equals 7. Well, first, let's write what this would be. Say f of x is 3 over x minus 2. Then we would have f of 7 minus f of 4. And then we divide by 7 minus 4. Now, what we can do is come to the side, calculate f of 7. This is 3 
divided by seven minus two. So you see f of seven is three over five. And then we can calculate f of four. This is three divided by four minus two. This is three over two. Now I can jump into this fraction. Maybe I will make this side work smaller. So I have three over five minus three over two. And then we divide by seven minus four, which is three. We do not want to leave it like this. We want to simplify this expression. So I can get a common denominator of 10 in my numerator. The first term I'll multiply by two over two. And so I have six over 10. The second term I'll multiply by five over five. And so I have 15 over 10. And then I still have all divided by three. Um, six minus 15 is negative nine over 10. Then I have this three in the denominator. Right. But understand this is a three over one in the denominator. And so I will invert and multiply. So this will be times one over three. Altogether, I get negative three over 10. This is the average rate of change of this function on this interval, negative three over 10. Now, what I want to define is the secant line. Secant line for a function. What this is, first of all, it's a line. So this is the line that connects two points. It connects the points A comma F of A, and it connects B comma F of B. Okay. Any two points provided they're not the exact same point, which these two would not be, A and B are different numbers here. Any two points determine a line between them. And this is the secant line for a function um, for this x equals a and x equals b. Now, why is this important? Well, notice the following. If we look at the slope of the secant line, this would be the change in y divided by the change in x. And well, we have two points on this line a comma f of a, b comma f of b. So this would be, say, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Well, what is this? f of b minus f of a over b minus a. This is the average rate of change. This is the average rate of change on the interval. So this is the beautiful thing about secant lines, it's a line such that its slope gives you the average rate of change of the function on the interval. Now, if we go back to this example here, I just drew line segments, but if I continued this to an entire line, this would be the secant line for this position function on the interval zero to one, and its slope was here, was the average rate of change on that interval. And similarly, I just drew this line segment, but if I drew the whole line here, this would be the secant line for this um, position function from one to two, and its slope was 30. This was the average rate of change on this interval. So this is a slope, okay? Every rate of change is a slope, but in fact, this average rate of change is the slope. It's a slope of the secant line. So if we go back to this example above, well, we have the slope of the secant line. And then, well, you can really use either point, right? We practice this in the very beginning. How do you find an equation of a line? Well, here's the slope and we could use four, f of four, or we could use seven f of seven. Let's use, doesn't matter too much, but let's use the point four f of four. And so the secant line would have the equation y minus y1 equals m 
and then x minus x1. This e gives us an equation for the secant line in this example above. But you see, we just used a point on the line and then the slope of the secant line is the average rate of change on that interval. Here's an example. We want to find the average rate of change of the sine function on two different intervals. And then we will try to interpret what we find. So first we can write this out. This would be f of pi over two minus f of minus pi divided by, well, we have pi over two minus minus pi. This is the formula for average rate of change of this sine function on this interval. Well, maybe I'll draw a unit circle. We are interested in minus pi, which would be terminal side here, and pi over two, terminal side right here. Okay, so f of pi over two, this is the sine function. This is one, and f of minus pi is zero. And in my denominator, you see I wind up getting pi over two plus pi, which is three pi over two. When I invert and multiply here, my average rate of change is two divided by three pi. This will be my final answer. Now, next one, same thing, it's a sine function, but we have a different interval. And so the average rate of change will potentially be a different number. What we want here is f of three pi over two minus f of negative pi over two. And then we divide by three pi over two minus minus pi over two, like this. Well, let's go back to our unit circle. Three pi over two, is here and negative pi over two. Well, it's also here. We get minus one, minus, minus one. And then in the denominator, we have three pi over two plus pi over two. This is two pi. But what do we get here? This is zero divided by two pi, which is zero. We have average rate of change zero on the interval from minus pi over two to three pi over two. Now, why does this make sense? Well, if we go back to this most recent lesson talking about the graphs of trigonometric functions, here's the sign. I will copy and paste it into our current lesson. Here is the graph of the sign. So on this interval, minus pi over two to three pi over two. Well, you see the secant line, I can also graph this, here would be the secant line. This is a horizontal line, which has slope zero. So this explains why we have zero average rate of change on this closed interval, minus pi over two to three pi over two. And I can add that comment that the secant line here is horizontal. It's a super cool example. Well, let's do one more. We'll find the average rate of change for this function h of theta and also write an equation for the secant line for this function. So first let's write out what we want here. We want h of 12 minus h of zero and then divided by 12 minus zero. Now we can, similar to when we had a fraction we were evaluating, we can come to the side, evaluate h of 12, and then also we will evaluate h of zero. So h of 12, we have the square root of four times 12, which is 48 plus one. This is the square root of 49, which is seven. And then h of zero, we have a square root of four times zero plus one. I will just write zero plus one, this is one. And so we go back to our slope calculation. This will be seven minus one divided by 12. This is six over 12 or one half. So the average rate of change of this function from zero to 12 is one half. 
Now, we can use that to find the equation of the secant line. Because I know it's slow, it's one half. And I can also find, well, maybe the easiest point is 0, 1 here, 0, 1. I could also use 12, 7. That would work as well. Now we have y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And this is fine for an equation. We could also, this one's not too bad because I have x minus zero. I could also write this as y equals one half x plus one. Maybe I'll underline this one, but really either form of the equation at this line would be perfectly fine. Now, um, this is all I want to say about this lesson, but what I'd like to do before I end this video is look at a graph. Let's graph this function and also look at its secant line. What we're looking at here in Desmos, I called it h of x, but this was h of theta, which was the square root for theta plus one. And then I've plotted these two points, 0, 1, and 12, comma 7. You can see they're both on the graph. Now, we calculated the average rate of change on this interval was one half. We also found an equation for the secant line. And it's here. You can see this visually. This is what a secant line is. It connects these two points on this graph. And the slope of this line, the slope of this secant line is what gives the average rate of change of this green graph over this interval. So this is the end of lesson 4.1. Thank you so much.